Welcome to another episode of Modern Bok. Thank you for joining me. So yeah, today I'm going to be covering mainly the South African England game. Um, I know it's, it's out of the international season, so there's I know that, I know that New Zealand's playing Japan, and that's going to be an interesting game. But I think it's going to be a big game for for Japan to just pr try and prove their running style game, and New Zealand to just blood some new debutants. Interesting game, but I think a dead rubber. Not to be to to be brutal about it. Good luck to Japan. I hope and pray on. That I, that I read some news that Japan wins, and I will definitely be watching the game, but I think it's going to be a tough one. Uh, and I think Japan, New Zealand is just showing their depth more and more as it goes. But that's actually quite an interesting thing I want to cover today on this game. I think that both uh, South Africa and England are showing some interesting depth in their team selections that really is promising for the World Cup. So let's dig into it. First things first, as I said, it's out of the international window. South Africa's got a lot of their... their almost none of their foreign players can really play, so it's going to be a nice... Well, not, okay, no, not foreign players, but European players can't play. But at least it's going to show the quality of local talent with a mix of some Jap players playing in Japan and that kind of thing. So it'll be interesting to see. Let's start off with England, though. So, interestingly enough, Owen Farrell at fly-off. Now, I know a lot of people obviously love him at fly-off. He's a great player, in my opinion, one of the best. But it hasn't been the, uh, the trend for Eddie Jones to put him in fly -off. He's played centre most of the time with Eddie Jones. So it'll be interesting to see how that combination and that he's going that way Especially since uh, Cipriani was the last fly-off to play with England when they won, when they beat South Africa in Cape Town. So, and he's now been pushed to three behind Ford. So, it's going to be interesting. I, th I think there's a massive twist there happening in that pivotal position. And that is probably one of England's biggest tough positions. That they, see, they, they seem to not be able to find their staple fly-off. Something that I think is helped South Africa this year with having a consistent Pollard at number 10. So, it'll be interesting to see how that continues the whole thing. But I think... Owen Farrell is the man for the job. He is the best in England at the moment. So I don't think it brings England down by having him there. I think it's probably a better choice. But it's just interesting to see that flow in that position. Uh, ben Tour actually comes into uh, centre. Uh, although he's actually had quite a little, very little play, I found that quite odd. Uh, he has had a very uh, small amount of time in the field. And I think there's a couple of better centres out there. But he is a strong player and a tough one. So it'll be interesting to see how that goes. Christian, Chris, uh, Chris Ashton's out due to uh, over Johnny May actually coming in. I, I think Johnny May has had a better season, but Chris Ashton actually isn't doing too badly either. So it's actually good to see that depth there. But a lot of the, it's a, it's a, almost a whole new English team. That's the biggest thing to see about this. Uh, no Philip Paolo is playing, so you've got other players coming in to do it with Mark Willem. But you've also got Tom, uh, Tom Curry and a couple other players who really are consistent throughout the season. So I think England throughout have actually got a very strong team. Even though it might not be a lot of their consistently powerful, I think it's actually a good time to refresh their team. With John Mitchell there in the in the defensive coach position, I think there's been a lot of talk about how he, obviously being coaching in South Africa for the last year, is going to be giving a lot of tips over to that. And I think that'll be very interesting. But at the same time, there's a lot of South African players who've been playing in England for most of the year giving clues this way. So I think it's just part of international rugby. But I do think John Mitchell's style of play and coaching style, if he's had enough time to actually bring it in, is really going to help England, especially considering that I feel is their weakest position. They seem to try and ram you over the ball, ram you over the ball, but when they when they fall back and they're actually overpowered, which is the case South Africa did to them in the beginning of this in, in June, um, they almost fall apart. So with John Mitchell's ability to help slow down the game, the New Zealand mentality of when altering and changing your playing style as the game goes. It'll be very interesting to see how that brings into the whole game. And I think a lot of guys are trying to put their hand up for the English team for next year's World Cup. So there's a lot to play for on England side, and that's great to see. So on to South Africa. We've got um, seven changes to out. Lost 15 that played against New Zealand. So it's also a huge shuffle. So both teams are are really trying to show the depth, show the quality, because that's the beautiful thing I have to say. I mean, I think everybody's touts New Zealand's quality, but I have to admit, I don't think either team has stepped wrong here in this game, even though almost half the team has been swapped out since their, their previous major international game, showing the quality that they have. I mean, in, or New Zealand also only swapped eight for the Japan game, so I think that there's all eight debutants. But, so I think it just shows that there's a lot of really great depth in international rugby at the moment, and it's something that as a rugby fan, I am just excited to see. So yeah, obviously, as I said, no European players uh, playing this game because it's outside the window, but it does leave some interesting hats. So Mike's most exciting position change, I'm just going to jump into it right away because I think it's exciting, is the loose pack. We've got one hat of a loose pack, and it makes me just giddy. We've got uh, Warren Whiteley, Dwayne Vermeulen, and Sia Khaleesi. Sia Khaleesi obviously staying in his position, Dwayne coming in after not playing in the rugby championship, and Whiteley coming back from a small injury that didn't play the last two games. 
but that is a loose trio any team would mouth with water to. Even, in my opinion, New Zealand water mouth water state. That is an amazing back three, in my opinion, and I'm so excited to see such bruisers play together. With the skill of uh, Whiteley and his a bit of tactical play, Dwayne Vermeulen's punch uh, and real dominance on the field, he really gets, uh, gets the team on the front foot, and Sir Khaleesi's blistering runs, that is a combination that I just can't wait to see, especially when you're trying to beat England, it's all about overpowering them. It's about just showing you your pure raw strength and putting them on the back foot. Once they're on, once they're on the back foot, they have a really hard time coming up. As I said, I think that is going to change a little in the team if you look at, especially if John Mitchell actually gets a little bit of uh, push into how he's coaching. But it'll be interesting to see how that goes. So I'm very excited about that combination. Peter Steff, I'm so glad because when I first saw the team right announcement, I thought that he was going to be left out of the team. But I, I remember that Franco Mostert obviously can't play. But in my opinion, um, the, that whole area is now just a gold mine for South Africa. We have locks to spare. Because, I mean, even now, Luit Jager coming, uh, coming off uh, injury on the bench. How do you have one of the, the, one of the best players in the last World Cup coming off your bench in this game as just another option? And when you've got a stunning player like Peter Steff who has just outshone himself. So I have to admit, I'm a little bit concerned seeing him back at, uh, at lock because they think he really made um, flank his own. But I, uh, at the same time, it's just good to have him on the field. The guy is a tackle of note, and he really puts himself wherever he goes. So it's really nice to see him still play in the field. And I, I think it shows true quality game, no matter what. The coach will find a place to put you on the field. Don't you worry. And that's always good to see. Yemen Etzebet, obviously joining Peter Steff in that uh, lock position. Great, game, great season so far. Consistent play and not too dirty. So I think he's continuing to just show his dominance and his leadership in that position. On, on to a little bit of the scrum. In the front of the scrum, we've got Kitsov and uh, Malharba and Marks. Obviously, a lot of I've been reading a lot of the New England um, newspapers on the threat of Marks, but they're forgetting Kitsov. That guy is a beast, and he also steals just as many balls as Marks do. And if you look at that, South Africa's probably got the most fetches in a team that they've had in the last three, four years. You've got Kitsov, Marks, Whiteley, and uh, Dwayne who are all stunning stealers of the ball, and I think that's going to be an element of the game which I don't think England is prepared for. Uh, something that we did very well against New Zealand is slowing down the ball and also getting our ball back and retaining our ball, something that I think this pack will do even better. Um, the scrums from uh, New Zealand with Kitsov, uh, with, with South Africa in the, with Kitsov in the front there is just going to be a powerhouse and marks also, again, a bruiser like Dwayne from Yellen. So I think both, in my opinion, this forward pack is probably the best forward pack South Africa can put on the field at the moment, and it's going to be an amazing game to watch. On to the back line, we've got um, Ivan van Sale, his first debut start, uh, if I'm not mistaken, if not his first one, first or two second game that I can remember, and um, Pollard's still consistent, and, it's, and we've got uh, Conor Notche coming back um, on your wing, uh, taking out Colby. So, that's going to be interesting. I think Notch had a great start to the season, especially in the England tests, and I'm glad to see him back. But it's nice to see that a caliber of uh, a player of Colby's caliber is coming off the bench and ready to play. Also, as he is also quality, quality talent coming. There. I don't well, actually I don't think he's coming off the bench. He's not playing this because of national, but I think it's still quality, quality play. Um, and then, interestingly enough, Damien Willems at the back. That's I think probably one of the most exciting propositions of the tournament. Although I have to admit, there's Something that I don't think, and I'm not sure why um, Rassi Rasmus is really ignoring. To, I know fine Warren uh, Warwick Halant is out due to injury, so I understand that. But Cole, uh, Cohen Bosch has had a stunning season in Super Rugby, just as good a season in uh, Curry Cup. So I really feel he deserves a start, and I'm not sure why the, the powers of B are ignoring him at the moment. I think he is a dangerous player and should be given a chance to show his quality in the box side. Not happening. Although, to be fair, Willems are also amazing season and really a great uh, move, of the, uh, move of the feet. In the last game against um, New Zealand, he also had a stunning round of uh, run, a couple of runs and he really showed his presence there. So overall, I'm not angry. I think most of the positions are just quality. This is probably going to be, this is close as possible. I think we're going to get to a Springbok side for the World Cup, maybe bringing Vili and Fuff back. And you've got the best side Springboks can field at the moment. So I think both teams are coming out here to play with real force. And it's going to be a massive, massive game at Twickenham. So all we can say is just mouth-watering for rugby supporters out there. So yeah, thanks, guys. I think the biggest thing um, 
we've got to look out for in this game is which team is going to be able to be most dominant up front. Once the team faces gets the dominance up front, they'll be able to come back. The, the backlines of either team, which are stunning backlines, will be able to show their quality. So let's see how it goes in that front. But I think the battle is going to be won and lost at the breakdown and at the ruck and at the scrum. So let's see how it goes. But thanks, guys. Enjoy. And yeah, I'll chat to you after the game to a review. Thanks very much. Please leave your comments down below on what the game you felt about the game or what your selections, opinions were. Please subscribe. Please share. Thanks.